You're examining a patient with a chief complaint of double vision. You've confirmed this is binocular diplopia by simply asking the patient to cover one eye, thus causing the images to fuse in the problem to resolve. You've also confirmed that the problem is one of horizontal diplopia by asking if the images are oriented side by side versus up and down. Now it comes to the physical exam, but it seems that the misalignment of the eyes is so subtle that you're really struggling to even see it using your traditional H testing or extraocular muscle testing portion of the exam. What do you do? Just get, just get an MRI. Just throw them in the... Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, I'm gonna to teach you one simple rule and an easy method to exploit that rule to help you figure out these subtle cases of binocular horizontal diplopia. Let's jump right in. Here's the only rule you need to remember. The most peripheral image is the false image. What do I mean by that? Let's use this can of bubbly water as an example. So if I'm the patient and I'm suffering from double vision, if I look at this can over to the left, nothing happens, there's one can. But what happens if I look to the right? If I slowly look to the right, and this happens, I get two images. The most peripheral image, this can, or the most lateral image, is the false image. So how do we exploit that rule to figure out what the problem is? Well, we're gonna use a very simple two-step process. Step number one, we need to ask the patient in which direction of gaze do we get the maximal separation of images. Then once we find that, we'll have them hold that direction of gaze and ask them to cover and uncover each eye until the most peripheral or false image disappears. Then we've discovered the problem eye and by simple logic, the problem cranial nerve or extraocular muscle. So let's do a quick example where I'm the patient and I'm gonna be observing this can of bubbly water. So looking to the right, I see one can. Looking to the left, I see two cans. So that's gonna be the direction of the maximal separation. So what are the potential options for problems here? Well, looking to the left and getting two images, I could have a problem with my left sixth nerve causing issues with left eye AB duction, or I could have an issue with my right eye something like an internuclear ophthalmoplegia that's subtle, or even a partial third nerve palsy that's causing issues with adduction of the right eye. So how are we gonna sort it out? Well, let's remember that the most peripheral image is the false image, that's this one. So let's make it disappear. I cover my right eye and the false image remains. And so I cover my left eye and the false image disappears. So that means my left eye is the problem. And using the prior two or three options that we had before, this leaves us with a left sixth nerve palsy. So let's do another quick example, but this time I'm gonna give you the answer. And I want you to think about in advance what you would expect on the exam. So what would you expect to see on exam in a left INO or internuclear ophthalmoplegia? So here's our can again, and we need to begin with step one, which direction of gaze is causing maximal separation? Looking to the left, I see one can. Looking to the right, we have two cans. So what are the potential options here? I could have an issue with left eye adduction, or I could have an issue with right eye abduction. So let's figure out the problem. I cover my right eye and the false image remains, and I cover my left eye and the most peripheral image or the false image disappears. So that means I have an issue with left eye adduction. So this would be the left INO. Now for fun, let's take a look at what this might look like from the patient's perspective. You are now the patient staring at the doctor's thumb. So we begin by looking to the left and nothing happens. But as we begin looking to the right, we note that the image splits in two. Now we know that the most peripheral thumb is the false thumb. So we'll begin by having you cover your right eye and the more medial image disappears. That didn't do it. And now we cover the left eye and the false image disappears. So we now know that there is an issue with left eye adduction and you're likely suffering from a left internuclear ophthalmoplegia. One question that might be lingering is, how does a red lens help me in this process? Well, really what the red lens is gonna do is color one of the images red. By convention, the red lens is placed over the right eye. And I think you can understand how this is simply a tool to help you communicate a little bit better with your patient. But these same basic principles apply when using a red lens. 
So for the most part, I don't personally carry a red lens. But Mike, what about a fourth nerve palsy? Well, I said at the beginning of the video we were going to be focusing on horizontal diplopia, but you will frequently encounter this complaint as well. I can save this for another video, but the simple rule to remember with the fourth nerve, or the trochlear nerve, is that it depresses the adducted eye. So what does that mean? Well, if I look to the right, my left eye is adducting, so to keep my eyes in line, my fourth nerve is depressing the left eye. So what would happen if I had an issue with my left trochlear nerve? Well, if I were to look to the left, this eye would actually drift up like this because it's not being depressed. So which direction do you think I might tilt my head to compensate? I would probably want to tilt my head this way so that I could keep those eyes back in line. So by remembering that simple rule, and thinking about in which direction your patient may tilt their head, you can usually figure this one out pretty easily too. So that's it for this video. Uh, I hope these techniques and rules can help you in your practice. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. Do me a huge favor and like this video and also hit subscribe. This is how you can really support this channel and help it grow. I'll see you next time.